The representative medication in the loop diuretics is furosemide. Furosemide is very potent that it can induce diuresis on patient who does not respond to other diuretics or with renal impairment. In addition, furosemide is prompt and has a short duration of action, making diuresis predictable. It can be given orally or intravenously. Furosemide, pharmacologically, is a loop diuretic. Therapeutically, it is an antihypertensive. Furosemide affects almost the entire nephron, including proximal and distal convoluted tubules. Yet most importantly, it acts on ascending loop of Henle. It interferes the mechanism of sodium-potassium chloride co-transporter and sodium chloride transporter, leading to excretions of these three cations, follows the diuresis. Furthermore, it also causes loss of calcium and magnesium. The therapeutic results of using furosemide are decreased cardiac workload and lowered blood pressure. Considering the therapeutic effects of furosemide, edema and hypertension are the indications for it. However, its action mechanism leads to electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, and hypovolemia, or worse, acute hypovolemic shock. Furosemide is a very potent and prompt diuretic. The induced dehydration could further lead to hypotension, and electrolyte imbalances can lead to severe hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, hyperglycemia, hyperuricemia, and gout. Elderly are more susceptible to effects of dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Both can be fatal. While adverse effects described earlier are commonly shared among diuretics, more or less, being a loop diuretic, furosemide is autotoxic. In other words, autotoxicity is a major adverse effect. Furosemide can lead to reversible or permanent hearing loss. Risk for autotoxicity increases when using furosemide inappropriately or in combination with other autotoxic medications or in patients who have severe renal impairment. Patient with severe renal impairment, anuria, or patient who are sensitive to furosemide should not take this medication. Furosemide is used in pregnancy only if benefit outweigh the risk. There is no well-controlled study to support its usage in pregnancy. Also, furosemide is excreted into breast milk. Therefore, special caution should be taken when using furosemide during breastfeeding. It is found that using furosemide in early weeks of life on premature infants increases risk for persistent patent ductus arteriosus. Teach the client the signs and symptoms and management of the adverse effects. Teach the female client to report pregnancy and decision on breastfeeding. Teach the client to take diuretics in the morning and early afternoon to avoid nocturia. Teach the client to avoid exposure to sun. Teach the client to monitor blood pressure, heart rate, body weight regularly. Teach the client prevention of orthostatic hypotension and other safety measures. Monitor elderly patients more closely because they are more susceptible to fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Teach the patient to call 911 if experiencing symptoms of heart attack or hypovolemic shock. Monitor fluid and electrolyte status as well as renal function. Use supplement of potassium or magnesium as needed. Teach the client to monitor ototoxicity, which can manifest as hearing loss or vertigo. When giving furosemide intravenously, note that IV solution should be clear and colorless. Discard solution if it's cloudy or with sediments. IV solution should be used within 24 hours after preparation. Discard it if past 24 hours. Do not mix furosemide with other solution. 
Use separate tubing set and always flush the IV catheter with saline before and after medication administration. Administering furosemide fast via IV route increases risk of oral toxicity. Therefore, mind the rate. Administer furosemide over 1 to 2 minutes if IV push and administer furosemide at rate not faster than 4 mg per minute if IV infusion. Using furosemide with aminoglycoside antibiotics and cisplatin can increase risk of autotoxicity. And for teracin B, corticosteroids, corticotropin, metallazone can increase risk of hypokalemia of furosemide. Furosemide can cause hyperglycemia. Therefore, it can decrease the hypoglycemic effect of antidiabetics. When using with antihypertensives, there will be an additive effect to lower blood pressure even more. Furosemide can cause hypokalemia. Therefore, it increases the toxicity effect of cardiac glycoside and neurotransmitter blockers. Must closely monitor the potassium level. Furosemide can also increase toxicity of lithium because it decreases the excretion of lithium, leading to accumulation of lithium. Monitor lithium level. NSAIDs can affect synthesis of renal prostaglandin. Therefore, it can decrease the diuretic effect of furosemide. Phenytoin can decrease diuresis of furosemide. When using with propranolol, furosemide can increase propranolol level, leading to hypotension. Must monitor patients closely if patients are using these two medications. Furosemide can increase toxicity of salicylates. Sucrophate can reduce diuretic effect. Use these medications apart by two hours. Discourage the client to use aloe vera with furosemide because aloe vera can increase effect. Bayberry, blue cohosh, cayenne, ephedra, ginger, American ginseng, and cola can worsen hypertension. It is recommended not to use these herbs with furosemide together. Licorice can worsen hypertension and cause rapid potassium loss. Instruct the client to avoid taking licorice with furosemide. If possible, it is highly recommended for patient to take furosemide on an empty stomach because any food can interfere with furosemide's already poor absorption, leading to low furosemide level and decreased diuresis effect. Exposure to sun can increase photosensitivity reaction. Advise the client to avoid exposure to sunlight by wearing light-colored, long-sleeved top and pants and sunscreen. Thank you for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you again.